For Project 40, Motor Control Sounds, we will use this circuit, and normally when you first turn on the slide switch after completing the circuit, you will hear a police car siren and music playing faintly in the background. Then it will stop, and in order to reactivate the circuit, you have to turn the motor, and it will come, the sound will come back on. The alarm sounds, and the music plays again. In this instance, I'm using mechanical energy from the motor, which is converted into electrical energy to power the circuit. For project 41, I put a three snap wire over here, and when I spin the motor, now the speaker produces the sound of a machine gun. And the music is even more faint. Now, when I spin the motor, the speaker will sound like a fire engine due to a three snap wire I put over here. With a two snap wire connected over the alarm integrated circuit on the left, I'm going to spin the motor and now the speaker sounds like an ambulance siren. Now, there's a three snap wire connected on the left side of the alarm and integrated circuit, but I removed the center one. Now, when I spin the motor, the speaker produces a staticky sound. You can hear the music itself easier, since the static is not as loud. Project 46 is more sound effects. I am going to turn on the slide switch and you will hear a faint fire engine siren. Although this project sounds very simple, it shows that the alarm integrated circuit can produce one of many different types of sounds. And that, as I explained in a previous project, sounds that can easily be changed are important in children's games and toys so that the circuitry does not have to be changed by hand. And if you were to quickly turn off and on the slide switch, you may be able to create some additional unique effects. They may sound robotic. Project 47 is this or that. This and the next couple projects will teach a few important concepts that are important to electronics, and they are also used in computer programming. Now, the or problem explains that you can use either the off switch or the press switch to turn on the red LED. Turn on the slide switch, the red LED lights. Turn it off and then push down the press switch, the LED lights. Because both switches are wired in parallel, you can use either one to complete the circuit and light the LED. Real life examples of a circuit with this type of logic would may include two switches, that are used to turn on a single light in your house or two sensors on either side of a railroad crossing that activate the signal when a train comes by. You may also have more than two switches in this type of circuit, but using either one will turn it on. 
Project 48 is this and that. Now the slide switch is on, but the red LED is not. I'm going to turn off the slide switch and push the press switch. Still nothing happens. But when I turn on the slide switch and push the press switch, the LED will light. The switches are wired in series, and therefore they both need to be on to complete this circuit and allow the LED to light. Now some real life examples of a circuit like this in which you need to have both switches on may include a light in your house. Sometimes you have to have both switches on, although that sounds unlikely. But what makes more sense is that one of those switches is the main circuit breaker and then you have a main wall switch. Even if you have your wall switch on, for example, but not the main circuit breaker switch, that light cannot come on. Now combinations of AND and OR circuits are used to add and multiply numbers together in computers using tiny transistors in massive integrated circuits. Project 49 is pretty interesting. It is neither this nor that. You will see that we have both switches wired in parallel again, but neither of them are on, but the LED is. But when I turn on the slide switch, the LED turns off because it is shorted. When I turn off the slide switch and push the press switch, the same thing happens. The LED gets bypassed and no longer lights. When I release it, the LED comes on. And this indicates that neither this switch nor that switch needs to be pressed for the red LED to come on. The NOR circuit is an important building block in computers. Project 50 is another mind-blowing one. And this is called Not This and That. The objective is to demonstrate the concept of what is called a NAND circuit. You will see that both switches are off and the red LED is on. When I turn on the slide switch, the LED stays on. When I push the press switch, the LED stays on. But when I turn on the slide switch while hold it, holding down the press switch, the LED turns off. This shows that both switches need to be on for the red LED to turn off. When they're both on, the LED is shorted and does not light. But when I turn off both switches, the LED stays on. A circuit like this can have more than two inputs. But it's if it has just one input, like if I replace the one of these switches with a solid wire, this circuit would be known as a not circuit. And so the OR and NOR, NAND, and NOT circuits are very important in computers. Project 53 is laser flashing laser light with sound. It's a beautiful day, so I'm going to do some of these projects outside. I'm going to hold down the press switch, and it may be hard to see, but the LED goes on and off as the speaker produces a sound like that of a laser gun. The LED could simulate an actual laser light as the gun is being fired. And you can either make long bursts or make short bursts by quickly tapping and releasing the press switch. LED is hard to see because it's very bright out here, but it does come on. Project 58 is using parts as conductors. I'm just going to quickly say that because the lamps do not work, instead of putting the L1 lamp here, I put a solid three snap wire. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and a machine gun sound is heard along with music in the background.
when I tap the whistle chip it will play. And then at the same time, when I push the press switch, the LED will come on, but the motor, and also the lamp if it was here, would not, because the current flowing through this part of the circuit is not strong enough to power the fan or lamp, if it wasn't included. And therefore those parts are just acting like three snap wires for the electricity to flow through. Now if I was to cover the phototransistor, you would hear a police car siren instead of a machine gun sound. Project 61 is light controlled sounds. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and I have the circuit out in bright sunlight. And because we have the whistle chip here, it's not going to be very loud, but you hear a police car siren. In this circuit, when light reaches the photo resistor, the resistance will decrease, allowing current to flow through the whistle chip. Now when I cover the photo resistor, the resistance increases and now current cannot flow through and the sound stops. Now I'm just going to quickly go through all the sounds. You may be able to hear them a little bit better. For Project 62, I would connect a, a three-snap wire over here and you hear a machine gun sound. Then for 63, when I put the three snap wire over on this side, the circuit will sound like a fire engine. When I take out this connection and put a two snap wire right here, the circuit sounds like an ambulance siren. And then for 65, I put the music integrated circuit directly over the alarm I say, and when I turn on the slide switch, you will now hear not only a police car siren, but music as well. When the music stops, the siren gets a little bit louder and clearer. Project 70 is quiet water alarm. For this project, you'll need a cup or container of water and the two jumper wires. You leave the ends of both of them exposed and then you'll put them in water. We have the circuit on, nothing happens, but once both jumper wires, once the ends of both wires are in the water, the alarm will sound because the water is completing the circuit. Water conducts electricity. And a real life application of an alarm like this could be a flood detector. In theory, you could have this in your basement and have longer wires with exposed ends that can be left on the floor. And then if your basement floods, like in a heavy rainstorm, the alarm will sound to let you know. Project 75 is sound controlled time delay LED. I am going to make this light come on by making noise. I'm going to slam my ha hand on the table and let's see what happens. The LED comes on and then as long as the music in the is playing, which you cannot hear, the LED will be on. After the music stops, the LED will turn off. Project 76 is motor controlled time delay LED. I replaced the whistle chip with the motor and after I let the music play once, I'm going to turn the motor and even when I spin it slightly, it the red LED comes on and it will stay on until the music is finished. I can do it again. I'll turn it counterclockwise. It doesn't matter which direction you spin the motor. And once again, it doesn't take much effort to get the LED on. 
and there you have it. Project 78 is music and gate. This is another and gate circuit in which both switches have to be on for the circuit to work. When I turn on the slide switch and hold down the press switch, the speaker will play music. This is another concept that's important in computer logic. And for instance, if condition X and condi condition Y are true, then execute instruction Z. I'm going to be able to do Project 79, Flash and Tone, but instead of using the L1 lamp, I'm going to use the green LED. Now, if you had just Snap Circuits Junior, you would not be able to use it because it's not included in this kit, the green LED. But when I turn on the slide switch, the whistle chip plays a pulsating tone as the green and red LEDs alternate. You hear two different tones that drive the LEDs, although in a real sense it would be the lamp and LED. Integrated circuits can control many different devices at the same time. And that's something I really like about them, I find interesting about them. Now it would take a very long time for the music to cycle through at the speed at which it's playing, so I'm just going to switch it off early. Project 80 is lamp, speaker, and fan in parallel. I'm going to turn on the slide switch, now I'm using the red LED in place of the lamp, and it actually, first you're supposed to start with the fan off the motor. Both components run properly. Now I'm going to turn off the slide switch, put the fan on the motor, and push the press switch, and turn on the slide switch. And gradually release the press switch. Then you'll push the press switch. And it might not be obvious, at least to the camera, but the speaker is acting like a low value resistor that does limit a bit of the current flowing through the motor and LED. Once again, it's not much, but you may be able to notice the LED dimming and brightening as I push and release the press switch quickly. Project 81 is pencil alarm. First, you'll have to fill in this rectangular box with several layers of thick pencil lead. It's recommended that you use a sharpened pencil, and it's recommended that you do it on a flat, hard surface. Fill the box several times. And then, place the exposed ends of the jumper wires over the lead in the box. It's a little tricky doing this one-handed. You may be able to get an alarm to sound. If it doesn't work well, you might want to either fill in the box again, and move over the drawing or put a drop of water on the jumper ends which I might do. You might be able to hear it a little bit now. I'm not going to do the variance because it's a little difficult but you would simply cycle through the other tones of the alarm integrated circuit using this method.